Hey guys, so um, today I wanted to talk about what it's like to be transgender and chronically ill. Um, but first I wanted to do like a little update um, from my last video. When I had the gastric emptying scan, it came back normal, which was like really good. So right now I'm doing a program with my therapist as well as like my GI knowing and um, this new doctor that I'm seeing for adolescent medicine. She's sort of like a general practitioner. Um, and we figured out like a way to do um to introduce food back to me so so far i have been able to have fries mashed potatoes which is a big thing for me because um i haven't had like lactose or anything with that like butter and milk in like two years so that was like very scary but i did it and it was yummy um and then pancakes with sprinkles because why not so i just had to pick up penny because <laughs> She wanted to sit and say hi to Winnie. Um, so, here's the baby. I know, I know, you like Winnie. They're friends. But we don't expose them to each other out of the cage. Anyways, so today I want to talk about what it's like to be... <laughs> She's making that. I know. Mwah. Um, I want to talk about the difference, at least for me, with being transgender and chronically ill. And how that's different than people who are cisgender. Um, and things that they won't encounter that I have encountered. Um, and cisgender just means being, like, identifying with the, um, sex that you are. <laughs> so, um, I did ask for some questions on my Instagram, which I will put down below. Um, so, please follow. But I got a few questions and then I also wanted to talk about just my experience and some of the things that I've noticed. Um, so some questions I got were like, what, how do you identify now and are you happy now and different things like that. Um, so I identify as male, I was born female and I've transitioned partly to male, but other things like medically, transitioning, I will get to that in a bit. It can be hard um, for people who do want to medically transition in different ways, in various ways. Um, but can't due to their health issues. Um, I, since I am a transgender male, I cannot talk about being a transgender female. And again, this is only my story. So not everyone's like this. And obviously not everyone has the same illnesses. So someone could have a different experience because they have a different illness. Um, but what we're more worried about with me that more interacts with it is my POTS and EDS. But I will get to that in a second. Um, so people wanted to ask if I was happy, and yes, I am so much happier now that I am out. I'm out to most people. I think the only people I'm not out to is, like, some family members, um, and that's pretty much it. I came out to my school when I was 13, and I came out to, like, my friends and my family, like, my inner family, and we've told, um, some, Penny being weird, uh, some people in our family and they have been really really nice and supportive and another question was asked to me by a family member who I love so much I love you Aunt Debbie um and how to support me I think that um the best way for any family member to support like their transgender family other family member um no matter what your relation is to them is I think just being really there for them I think for adults in a weird way it's a balance between being there for the the kid and then also for their parents because not everyone's parents understands right away and not everyone knows what being transgender is or what it means and so I think having family that they can go to and they can talk to especially when there's accepting family like outside of your inner family circle being able to talk to them it definitely helps because you don't feel like you're just by yourself and I also think it helps like if there's other like family members that have LGBTQ like children, um, it's easy for them to talk because it's like, oh, okay, you know, I know you what you're going through in some way. Um, so that definitely helps. And I think for one thing, just like in general, um, I know like before I was out to other people, it definitely bothered me and some people that I'm not out to, um, like my grandparents I'm not out to, like when you, I think gendering, it can be very difficult for some family members um especially if like some family members aren't accepting if their parent like you know if someone's parents are not accepting but like their other family members are so like gendering can be weird i would say 
it, like don't gender them then because sometimes like on birthday cards or something like that um putting like for example me if you put like female um names like daughter da da i think i find that like hurtful it makes me really uncomfortable so but if someone's not comfortable with using those male terms i would say more generic things um because that can it it can be like oh i get you don't understand at this point but like uh it still makes me uncomfortable but i mean like I, a lot of people just sort of common sense do that my hair is crazy in the back um and so yeah i think that's like some good ways to support them and i honestly ask questions as long as you're not like aggressive of anyone um but obviously family member asked me this she's not <laughs> but like in general for everyone i would just say don't be like so aggressive i think like being open-minded is very good because like at the end of the day you're probably not an expert in this and you know you don't live your life um in their life basically so um i think just being open-minded um for other trans people sending youtube videos also helps but for being transgender and having medical problems, it can be way more complicated depending on who knows and how that affects your health and how that affects transitioning, um, like with hormones or surgery, especially for me with Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome and POTS, it's a little bit more complicated. I will be seeing endocrinology, um, I think March 11th. So, um, I will get more information then on what is okay for me or what we think, or just more information in general. Um, but I think for basic ways is like, if you're in the hospital, like you always have a band that's based off of your gender. For some people who have like really bad dysphoria, like me, when they're like, oh, are you pregnant? Could you be pregnant? Oh, da, 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 and start talking about all these like female things. Obviously it's for my health and it's important. So I'm not angry in that sense, but it definitely can heighten your dysphoria as well as in being in the hospital, like where I am, um, not obviously now, but when I was in the hospital, they would have to do skin checks to make sure that everything's okay. You know, if there's like a weird rash or something that would cause them to think like, okay, there's this like disease or maybe if there was like a mold that looks weird, like cancer, that kind of stuff, they have to look, but sometimes it could be like really uncomfortable because obviously like I'm not comfortable in my own body. Um, but that definitely can be hard telling other doctors. I think it's really important if you are able to have a family member that is, you know, accepting of you, like my mom, she's amazing. And she understands that like if she doesn't use my preferred name and pronouns around like other doctors or even like other kids, like um, my age, they will automatically go to female pronouns just because some people are mean and some people <laughs> like don't understand. Um, so it can definitely be difficult in that sense. Um, so having like, even if your parent really isn't comfortable with using your preferred name and pronouns, sitting down with your doctor or a psychologist or whoever and saying like, okay, this is what I go by, so-and-so, parent, guardian, etc., won't use these, but I'd like you to use these, is very, very helpful. And my experience um, with, you know, children medicine is they're way more open to um, transgender, like kids and children and teenagers because, um, it's stressful being transgender and also that can cause pain to heighten a lot of the time. Why are you whining? Mwah. She's a whiny baby. Right. Um, so I, I found that people are very accepting and um, very good with working with me. Um, and so that's like really important for me. Um, but talking about medically transitioning, some people want to medically transition. I have socially transitioned, um, when, since I was 13 and so on, I came out to people, eventually cut my hair, I went in stages because I think a lot of it is, um, before we get to the medical stuff, like, at first, I think you get to a point 
being trans where you're like, okay, I'm ready to come out. And you fully have accepted yourself. And you're like, yeah, I'm ready for change. Yeah. And then Winnie made that huge noise. And then you get to that point and you come out to all these people and they're not on the same level as you. And though I know like it's definitely hard, I think I didn't understand as much at the time when I was coming out to my parents because they don't know what being trans is. Like they did, but like not too much. And I was totally like, I'm confident in myself. Like I know who I am, you know, I still do. And they just didn't have that time to adjust and process it for themselves. So for me being like, ha, ah, like I like need you to be like, gung ho, yeah. Like it's not realistic, no whining. So I had to put Penny in her crate because she was being way too wound up. Um, but as I was saying, I think talking to people and letting them know, like for me, it was my, my mom, explaining like why in public using my preferred name and pronouns or around certain people, why it's important. I think if you don't use um, preferred name and pronouns for some people in some areas, some, you know, people are mean. And I think they use it as an excuse to flaunt their ignorance. Um, and I think it's acceptable because someone else of like a more authoritative figure has done it like a family member or um like a teacher or different people that you know like a medical professional you know all these different things um i think people very much are like oh okay well you used it i'll use it now and i definitely have had people purposely misgender me and use my birth name to make me upset and angry but I doesn't like it's obviously annoying and bothersome because I'm like really like now I'm just like why are you having to do that like I don't understand like if you don't like me fine but there's like a line of respect um but it used to bother me first when I came out way more but obviously I'd rather have people gender me correctly so that's why I explained that to my mom and I think that that's important sometimes to just sit down and have like real conversations and be like this is how things are and it sucks but I just need you to be there for me so that this is easier for me and um yeah I think that's very important but for medically transitioning personally for me and for other people it can be very 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 difficult because um like you already have a lot of medical problems and I think some practitioners are very much like you have chronic pain stress obviously and do like increases chronic pain um especially people with like amps and stuff stress can so much increase chronic pain um but it's definitely for any illness um so what i have encountered with um more children's doctors is they're very much supportive of transitioning but it can be very difficult. My hair is all crazy. <laughs> um, but it can be very difficult because there's different complications with different kinds of hormones. Specifically, I can only talk about what my doctors have mentioned to me about me. And testosterone is so much different than estrogen. So again, I can't talk about estrogen. I could do research or I could ask someone with me. If you guys are interested in that, you can comment down below and I will be able to talk more about this or even if you want me to talk more about being trans and queer and you know being sick or just in general if you have any questions also you can comment them below but um the, I think the hard part is definitely like for me personally um when I first knew I was trans I was like hormone surgery like I had it all planned out I knew like the expense cost is like the cost I, I knew what I needed to do um when I first like came out it was right around when I third like well I turned 13 in June and I sort of figured that out over the summer um even though like looking back I'm like oh wow I knew what trans was and I sort of related to it but I didn't understand because I was eight and I really didn't look into it but um yeah I think right then and there I was like oh okay and I didn't have much um health problems until like the end of me being 13 so um I really didn't think it was gonna get to this I had no idea um but I think the hard part, at least for me, is testosterone can, honestly, starting any hormone um, is going to change your body, obviously. But in that, that can also flare up things and things are changing. 
Um, I know with people with EDS that sometimes, and for some reason, puberty causes symptoms to show up why a lot of us start having our symptoms when we're teenagers. For example, like a part of my symptoms is my eyesight when I was starting puberty, like my normal puberty, obviously. <laughs> um, like my eyesight like tripled in how bad it was and just it's continuing to get worse. So that can also, you know, cause an increase of symptoms for some people. Um, I know with testosterone, there's some things that can affect the heart. Um, so you have to also know like what medicines you're on and what different things. And so I'm on a beta blocker to stop myself from having high blood pressure. It runs with my family, but I was getting high blood pressure. Um, but I also have POTS, so my heart rate goes high. The beta blocker does help with that. Um, but I can also have a low blood pressure. So all those different things can affect the heart. Then you add testosterone, all those different things. And then surgery, I think, is also a hard part, especially with EDS, because we do not heal well from surgery. And so I have never had a surgery of like stitching. I, I don't know how it will go, and I hope I don't have to have one, but surgeries can be pretty common with EDS, um, but not like, you know, obviously, being trans is something totally different and I've seen people or heard stories of people who are a trans male and also have EDS and you know when we even let's just talk about top surgery you have two giant scars on your chest if you decide to do um I think it's a double mastectomy some people can do keyhole is where they sort of they take all the brush tissue out flip the skin under where the nipple is and sew it all together Either way, with EDS, start, like the scars and everything, it does not heal well. The skin can be more stretchy. Obviously, it depends on what type you have and how bad it is. Um, but it can not heal well. And with at least top surgery, you're not supposed to lift your arms above your head. Already having terrible shoulders, that would just make them worse. Um, healing time is way longer. So all of these things can debilitate you even more. Um, there's more chances if you care about like how this the scars look of them stretching um, and different things like that and looking different and more noticeable so some people have like issues with that where they're nervous um, but there's also bottom surgery I'm mean, talking about one specific type um, just because that's what I wanted right away when I was younger but that one is like completely out of the question it's called phalloplasty um, basically what they do, they normally take skin from the arm to create tissue. So they normally would take like skin from here and a nerve from here, and then they create your bottom area and all that. Yeah, there's, that's a lot of surgery. One, you're taking an entire skin graft from my arm. That is going to take forever to heal. I get a bruise from kneeling on the ground and it doesn't heal for like a month. I mean, it's just like for practicality of my own health, it sucks. But with being transgender, sometimes you have to, and being like chronically ill in a physical way, um, it is hard because you have to sometimes give up your mental health for your physical health, which sucks. <laughs> um, anyways, like other complications that can happen with that is they have to create like an extension of the urethra that can sometimes with people who are healthy that can sometimes the sewing can open and the urine will end up not going out the right way so instead it will go into that hole sort of like a straw with a hole in it in the side that's not gonna work um so also with people with eds it stretches like scars can stretch all of that kind of stuff it's even more complicated um so at this point i honestly think surgery would be something i probably wouldn't be able to do if I'm able to get on hormones quick enough because personally I know this is very TMI with hormones I feel like I would be okay with the way that my body would change because I'm not too developed 
I know that's a big TMI. <laughs> it's sort of uncomfortable talking about it, but it's honestly, it's just being real. Um, but for some people, they don't have this luxury, and some people do end up having top surgery with EDS, but that can present for complications for any person, but especially um, with having like chronic illness, especially when it affects the skin, it can be a lot harder. Um, but as I was talking as well, um, giving up your mental health for your physical health can happen and it really sucks and I think you really need to find a way around it and having a good support system. Um, like for example, I'll put an example out there of my life. I can't, I used to wear a binder. If you guys don't know what a binder is or what binding is, basically what it does is it flattens the chest in the simplest way. The safest way to do it is with an actual binder. Don't use ace bandages or tape. Don't do it, just don't. It can really mess up your rib cage well, using a binder, you need to be careful about how many, like how long you use it for. People with breathing problems, that can be even worse. And for me, someone with really dodgy rib cage, like ribs and my rib cage, like they come out, like my ribs come out pretty, uh, like often my right side, like my ribs um, indent, um, and my left side can sometimes come in and out. So it makes it harder to breathe. So I can't wear a binder anymore. So your dysphoria, at least for me, can heighten because of that. So instead, I have to wear really baggy shirts or different things. So it limits what I can wear and what I'm comfortable in. So I wear a lot of the same clothes um, just because it's my comfort zone. A lot of like black and dark colors um, are able to hide more of the curves of your body more. So it definitely sucks, but it's something that I have to be, you know, aware of and just deal with because it's like, okay... Does it make me more comfortable mentally? Yes, and I would love to be more comfortable mentally and my, like with my body, but I don't want to cause any permanent damage to my body already <laughs> having a lot of damage in my body and just with EDS, a lot of things coming out. Also taking off a binder is very, very difficult. I would probably pull my shoulders out of place even though they're already easy to come out. So. That's like a little bit of what it's like to be trans and chronically ill. Um, but I mean, I didn't go into everything and it was sort of fast paced because I didn't want to make this video super long because I could go on about this forever. But I just didn't want the video to last forever. So if you have any questions, like I said, please like leave them down below. I could do more videos on this, honestly, being someone who is LGBTQ, like, I want to be able to advocate, and I do want to, I will advocate um, for other LGBTQ disabled chronic and chronically ill people because it's important, just like any minority is important. Obviously, having a disability is hard. And then the access to other things when they cross over, and I know I'm from like a privileged place also of, you know, being white and being a transgender male it's way harder for transgender females a lot of the time being like accepted and especially like any trans person of color but especially trans women of color um so i'm obviously only talking from my perspective and from what i go through but if you have any questions about anything it doesn't always have to be transgender any other sort of queer questions you can put them down below and i'll do another video on it so i hope you enjoyed Love you guys so much. Bye.